How is it that so many people see the most well-known English author of all time as dull, difficult, and downright torturous? Well, because his language is so tough, right? But that's also why we read him. Reading Shakespeare is like playing a really tough video game. Part of the reward is in the challenge. But like with a tough game, you need a good tutorial, or you're gonna spend a lot of time being frustrated. So let's look at five tips to make reading Shakespeare way more enjoyable and easier. Don't stress the beginnings. The exposition is often the most difficult part of understanding any story. And I think Shakespeare understands this because many of his plays do two things. One, they repeat exposition throughout. Remember, the average person in Shakespeare's audience might not have known how to read or had any time at school. They weren't all walking around thinking in perfect iambic pentameter all the time. So the exposition is repeated throughout. People also showed up late to the theaters because, you know, they didn't have watches or phones or anything. So he'd want to fill things in for people that arrived not when the show started. Number two, he starts with characters who don't always reappear, or at least reappear very frequently. Think Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, A Midsummer Night's Dream. And it's not that these characters aren't important, but they're not necessarily the main characters, so if you can't remember who they are, it's not the biggest deal if you're just trying to get through a first read of the play. So don't stress about understanding everything at the very beginning. Give yourself permission to ease into the world of the play. Keep the original staging in mind. Shakespeare's plays were performed without modern lighting, sound, or movable scenery. So, Shakespeare immerses his audience into the world of his plays with his words. Oftentimes, a scene will start with a phrase or a prop that establishes the setting. Hamlet's Who's There tells us it's nighttime. Romeo and Juliet debate whether the bird they hear is a nightingale or a lark, essentially whether it is the night where they can safely be together, or nearly dawn when they must depart ere they be discovered. Paying attention to these subtle clues will help you establish a setting in your mind and better navigate the world of the play. In a similar vein, Shakespeare plays often employ off-stage action. Unlike film where you can show pretty much anything, provided you have the ingenuity and the budget, plays are much more bound to physics and practical effects. And while there's plenty of action on stage in Shakespeare's plays, many events play off of the stage. The Tempest and Twelfth Night start with shipwrecks, Macbeth has a battle, and Much Ado's main villain has already been caught before the play has started, all off stage. Rather than showing us these events, Shakespeare creates them through the actor's storytelling. Looking for offstage actions ensures you don't miss the essential events of the play. Oftentimes, Shakespeare brings us this offstage action through some of the most intimidating lines, monologues. As a teacher, I often hear an audible groan when we get to a line like this. And I don't blame my students, this is a lot to read and it's tempting to skip over it or just skim through as fast as you can. But monologues in Shakespeare often contain revelations and insight into the characters. Many soliloquies would have broken the fourth wall and been delivered directly to the audience. So as you read them, look for what the character is working through. There's often a range of emotions and responses, like Juliet's poison monologue. Or it could be a call to action and inaction, like Hamlet's Now Might I Do It Pat. Or a performative piece of one's philosophical worldview, like Jayquees's All the World's a Stage. But sometimes, long lines aren't all that important. At least not all of them. Shakespeare's works are old and therefore filled with archaic words and phrases. Unless you're an actor, scholar, or director, you don't need to know what every single word means. And there's some phrases that even the professionals can't agree on what they mean. If your main goal is to read through the play and more or less understand what's going on, then the best advice I can give is to navigate the parentheticals. Take for instance this line from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Even though there's a lot of words in these few lines, all you really need to understand the plot of the play is what's highlighted here in yellow. The rest of the phrases are interesting and they are beautifully written, but in terms of the plot, they're superfluous. So as you read a Shakespeare play, especially if you're reading it for the first time, do your best to navigate the parentheticals. 
And there you have it, five tips and tricks for reading Shakespeare. I hope this helped. And if you still have questions about Shakespeare, check out one of these videos here. Thank you so much for watching. Happy reading.